For purposes of this video, the right side will be the patient's right side and the patient's right eye. The left side will be the patient's left side. Don't be confused when I say right and left. I'm speaking about the patient's right eye and the patient's left eye. The arrow here is pointing to the patient's right eye, which happens to be on your left. Here is a cartoon example that illustrates very well the swinging flashlight test. Notice the light is moving very quickly from one eye to the other eye. This is how you swing the flashlight. And observe the pupillary responses in the swinging flashlight test to find an APD. When you do find an APD, you have found a damaged optic nerve. This can be very important for the clinician and doctor to provide care to the patient, especially in situations where there is sudden vision loss or long-standing vision loss that needs to be evaluated and determine treatment. To do this test yourself, you need to move the flashlight quickly from one pupil to the other. Pause when you get to one side so that you can observe the pupillary response. It is the initial and first pupillary movement that you care about. Is it constricting or is it enlarging? The difference means if there's an APD there or not. Well, what is the optic nerve? It is a collection of 1.2 million nerve fibers. It connects the brain with the eyeball. It's like the TV cable that goes from the camera to the computer. The camera being our eye and the computer being our brain. The optic nerve connects them. Without this cable, we wouldn't see. The optic nerves come together in the brain and cross at an area called the midbrain. At the midbrain, there are different processing centers. One is called the Edinger Westfall nucleus. We have two optic nerves. The red pathway shows light stimulation going into the brain down the optic nerve. In the midbrain, nerve fibers cross from the right side and the left side and intermix at the Edinger Westfall nucleus. The green pathway shows stimulation coming back to the nerves, through the nerves, to constrict the pupils. So if you shine light on one eye, both eyeballs will constrict through this nerve pathway. This is important to realize that the light in one eye will constrict both eyes. In essence, when you swing the flashlight, you are measuring constriction from one pathway to the other pathway. If the optic nerve is damaged, constriction will be less on the damaged side. Therefore, both eyes will dilate. So when you swing to the eye that's damaged, that pupil will appear to dilate. That is the swinging flashlight test. Let's look at that again. Here, the, when the light shines on the, small, on the normal side, the pupil is smaller. When the light's shining on the bottom, or B, the pupil enlarges. Notice both eyes are smaller or both eyes are larger. However, we typically just look at the eye where the light is because in a dimly lit room, it's easier to see. Here is another cartoon showing an APD on the left eye. Notice when the light swings to the left eye, the pupil enlarges. This would be a positive APD OS. Here is another graphic. In the top section, without light, the pupils are medium-sized and equal. With light shining in the middle section, on the left eye, the pupils get small. Swinging back to the right side, on the bottom section, the pupils enlarge again. This shows the optic nerve on the right side is not functioning and is abnormal. That is an APD, or a Marcus Gunn pupil. Here is an interesting case. The right eye has a blown pupil, probably from trauma. That means the pupil does not react. Where is the APD? When you go to the left side, the right side gets bigger. This is an afferent pupillary defect. This is an APD by reverse. You can see the APD by observing the eye where the light is not being shown. That's how you know that the right side is damaged in this case because the left eye is dilating when the light is shown on the right. That's an APD by reverse.
Can you see the APD by reverse here? It's actually on the left eye. When the flashlight goes to the left, the left side gets larger. When it goes to the right eye, the left pupil gets smaller. That means the left optic nerve senses less light than the right optic nerve, even though it has the blown pupil. In this case, the APD by reverse is positive and abnormal for the left eye. In summary, an afferent pupillary defect is a clinical sound found by technicians and providers that shows optic nerve damage. Understanding that light causes both pupils to constrict via the midbrain and consensual pupillary response reflex arc will help you understand how to check for an APD even when one pupil is fixed and not moving at all.